December 2004. NASA Special Agent Dan Oakland and Security Manager Henry Butler explore a remote corner of a launch complex at Cape Canaveral. You might think that a NASA launch facility is perfectly organized with everything in its place, but there are miles and miles of corridors. Down one corridor, they discover an unknown locked room. A locked room that nobody knows about in the middle of one of the NASA's most important launch complexes. That's kind of strange. The lock is so old that Oakland and Butler have to use a master key to open it. They finally find a way into this room, and it's empty. Dark, rats, dust. But there is one box. And it contains two pristine condition spacesuits. The suit's design is similar to those worn by astronauts during the 1960s, but key details differ. They're blue, which was not actually used in the US space program. They're not from Mercury, they're not from Gemini, and they're definitely not from Apollo. The discovery comes to the attention of intelligence journalist James Bamford. He suspects the suits are evidence of a secret space mission. Suit 008 gives him a potential lead. One of them had a number 008 on the chest, along with the name Lawyer. Bamford discovers that Lawyer is Richard E. Lawyer. Bamford finds that Richard E. Lawyer was one of 17 Air Force pilots earmarked to fly in space under the secret U.S. Air Force space program. Declassified documents reveal the first military space program was a satellite project, codenamed Corona. Designed to supersede U-2 spy planes, the classified program used 144 satellites to spy on America's enemies. Despite some initial successes, Corona's limited camera technology means it is ultimately viewed as a failure. So the Air Force thinks that what it really needs to do is to put some people up there to get the job done right. Bamford believes the suits were used in a program aimed at replacing Corona, called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, or MAL. Like something from the James Bond film Moonraker, MAL was an orbiting craft which would deploy spies in space. Spies on board the $3 billion watchtower would intercept Soviet satellites and take high-resolution images of enemy installations. On November 3rd, 1966, NASA launches a prototype unmanned spy station on behalf of the Air Force. After one test, the MOL program is shut down, as advances in satellite technology make space spies redundant. 